everybody. Beyondrew TV here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another episode here of the Planet Zoo Europe Pack Mini Zoo. So yeah, this this isn't really like a mini zoo anymore. I think it's gone. We can probably axe out the mini. It's just kind of a zoo. And it's not even really a zoo, is it? <laughs> That's kind of been the running theme through this uh, entire series is still trying to uh, pinpoint what the heck this is. It's not a zoo. It's not mini. It's like a town with a forest that has animals in it. I don't know. It's just a thing. Let's just call it a conservation zoo, wildlife, safari. You know, throw all the words in there um, that kind of describe uh, local or uh, modern zoos and everything, and then uh, that's what this is. But uh, so anyways, yeah, we are continuing our build here in the outskirts of the town in the woods section there, just outside of our uh, Bavarian-themed uh, town and everything. So uh, yeah, we are going to go ahead and tackle the Eurasian wolf uh, habitat this week. So yeah, the Eurasian wolf is a mod. Um, we are doing a few mods here. We did uh, the Wascent in the last episode, or was it two episodes ago? Oh, no, last episode was the um, it was it the Eurasian uh, Otter, which was also a mod. So this week we're doing the uh, Eurasian uh, Wolf, which is a mod. We did the Wascent a few episodes back, which was a mod. And then next episode will be another mod. So shout out to all the awesome modders uh, for these um, awesome animals. But yeah, the next episode will be a uh, Eurasian brown bear. So then, then that will kind of cover um, this entire big expansion plot area um, that we kind of opened up in the last few episodes there. So uh, but yeah, as we're going forward here, uh, the kind of theme for this little plot of land, because I'm going to try to give a little bit of a theme, I guess you'd say, for uh, each plot that we're kind of building for here. Uh, we are going to go ahead and build a ruined, um, you know, I guess abandoned ruined castle that's, you know, been there for uh, probably centuries now or whatever. So, um, yeah, just a really kind of decrepit um, old uh, ruined castle. So, yeah, these new uh, rustic pieces are absolutely perfect uh, for building a really, really cool uh, old rundown castle look there. So, uh, yeah, we kind of run with the, uh, the rustic look with that for a lot of this build there. It's basically these pieces and a whole bunch of foliage. Um, to be honest with you, I'll probably jump into a, uh, depending how much I ramble on to be <laughs> it's what it kind of comes down to, um, we'll probably jump into a live portion of this because, yeah, again, um, a good portion of this build is putting down foliage foliage and building um, this castle and using the rustic pieces. So uh, it's kind of not the most, in my opinion, it doesn't seem like the most entertaining um, time-lapse footage. So we'll probably get a close-up view of that in just a few minutes or real-time view and everything. So, um, but yeah, no, as we uh, kind of build this, it's uh, it doesn't really have the look of a German castle or a Bavarian type castle. As I was doing my research uh, for this habitat and what to kind of put in here, I knew I wanted to get um, a castle of some sort, but just didn't really know what I, uh, what kind I wanted to uh, do. And as I was looking up, again, the Bavarian or German type castles, they're very um, like fairy tale uh, looking castles, even like the ruined ones. They might be a little subdued in like their colorings and, you know, they're kind of crumbling apart. But um, for the most part, most of the German castles that I looked up, again, they're very fairy tale looking. They're almost like a a Disney, yeah, like a Disney fairy tale. Um, I guess you say like your Cinderella, uh, Cinderella type castles or uh, Sleeping Beauty type castles. So I kind of opted to go for more of the uh, the English type castle made out of, you know, stone, um, not really much color to it, um, really, really um, just bare bones um, minimum. I guess that's kind of the difference. I'm sure there's examples of, uh, you know, obviously like a colorful, beautiful uh, English castles as well, but it seemed like for most of the research I was doing, um, a lot of the old English castles um, have kind of gone into ruin, and um, that's kind of the look that I was going for here, so, um, but yeah, no, again, these uh, rustic, these brand new rustic pieces um, that I've been using throughout the entire uh, build there have uh, worked out really, really well um, for this part of the, uh, for the castle build and everything, so... Uh, but yeah, as we're um, moving forward throughout the build here, we are going to be jumping back over, uh, not in this episode or the next one, but uh, so three episodes or two episodes from now, we'll finally be jumping back over to the town uh, section. It has been a few episodes since we've kind of hung out over there. So uh, yeah, we will go ahead and jump back over there and probably finish up the town. Because uh, again, we only really have, we're going to be doing the Eurasian brown bear, but uh, except for that, um, for the actual animals uh, that we have from the Planet Zoo Europe pack, uh, we have the lynx to build for yet and then the uh, fire salamander which I'm not really sure what to do for this fire salamander I feel like what it's going to come down to is probably making a restaurant or uh, some sort of shop or something like that that happens to have the uh, fire salamander uh, habitat box in it and everything like that where guests can view it and then the links I kind of have a rough idea but I think it'd be kind of cool to incorporate the links as an in-betweener animal so in between like the woods and the uh, the town so maybe um, it can we can set up like a maybe 
maybe in someone's backyard or like a courtyard or something like that, the lynx can have a bunch of uh, climbing structures and everything. I don't want it to have a ginormous uh, habitat for the uh, for the lynx there. But so yeah, I think like a little courtyard might um, work out with some uh, climbing structure uh, structures rather, um, and then maybe have a little habitat inside of um, maybe make like a little uh, Bavarian house and have that have its uh, habitat inside there as well. Have an indoor outdoor uh, little habitat. So yeah, the more I was talking about that, the more the, uh, fun that sounds. So, um, but yeah, as we're uh, moving forward with this build, a lot of terrain work as well. That was the other thing. Oh yeah, I, I kind of forgot about this whole little bit here. Um, that is the other little bit that we do a lot of here is a lot of terrain work because um, I wanted to get these uh, this kind of multi-level uh, viewing kind of going on here. And I actually uh, did a lot of this uh, live on stream. So uh, my streams are really intermittent. It kind of just depends on when I am uh, able to get off work in time, essentially. Uh, so yeah, if you um, are around between the times of 1 to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, that's typically around the time that I'll try and go live again if I get off of uh, work early enough. But um, yeah, I've worked on a lot of this on uh, stream live in the middle of the week. So um, there you go. You can try and catch that. But yeah, again, I wanted to uh, get a lot of multi-levels, a lot of uh, multi-layers going uh, with the pathing and everything. We're, we're working with a lot of uh, different landscape changes, you know, a lot of different um, height variations and everything. And um, it's so much fun to, again, just try and uh, layer the paths on top of each other or just try and get bridges kind of crisscrossing back and forth especially for this kind of build where we're doing like an older um you know european uh, yeah obviously you know an older european type um look to it and we can kind of uh get this old like rustic look old wooden look and everything and um it just yields for some uh, really really nice uh, vistas and everything like that so um but yeah no as we uh, go ahead and build for the eurasian wolf there a little bit um i figured um yeah while we're doing some of the um castle build we'll do some eurasian wolf kind of facts and and stats and all that kind of fun stuff because yeah we have a lot of episode to get through today so um the eurasian wolf so let's go ahead and read some uh, facts and fun things about the eurasian wolf there it's also known as the common wolf the european wolf the carpathian wolf the steps wolf a whole bunch of wolf names there for it um the tibetan wolf and the chinese wolf is a subspecies of the gray wolf uh currently it has the largest range among wolf species uh, subspecies and is the most common in europe and asia i did not know that it ranged all the way over into uh, parts of Asia. That's pretty cool. Ranging through Western Europe, Scandinavia, Russia, China, Mongolia, and the Himalayan mountains. Originally spread over most of Eurasia, with a southern limit of the Himalayas, the Hindukush, the Kapit Dag, the Caucasus, the Black Sea, and the Alps. It has been pushed back from most of Western Europe and Eastern China, surviving mostly in uh, Central Asia. Uh, some of its characteristics, the Eurasian wolves have shorter, denser fur than their North American relatives. Their size varies according to region, although adult uh, measures from 30 uh, inches, 76 centimeters, at the shoulder and weigh around 72 to 130 pounds, uh, 32 to 59 kilograms, with females usually being about 20% smaller than males. The heaviest known Eurasian wolf was killed in Romania and weighed 158 pounds or 72 kilograms. Wow, it's a big, uh, big boy there. Um, but let's see, uh, the color of Eurasian wolf ranges from white, cream, red, gray, and black, sometimes with all the colors combined. Wolves in Central Europe tend to be more richly colored than those in nor uh, Northern Europe, um, excuse me, Northern Europe. And I did notice that there was a big, um, variation between, uh, coats. You got this kind of subdued kind of gray look, almost looks like a North American wolf. And then, yeah, that kind of almost burnt like amber or burnt red look, uh, to a lot of them there. <clears throat> Some of their behaviors, uh, the Eurasian wolves are highly social animals, though due to a decline in territory, they form smaller packs than in North America. Social behaviors seem to vary from region to region, an example being that wolves living in the Carpathians tend to be predominantly solitary hunters. Interesting. Uh, Eurasian wolf reproduction, the, um, the wolf alpha male and female mate between January and March. Litters usually consist of six pups, which are born seven weeks later in a den, which has been dug, um, dug among bushes and rocks. The males bring back food to the den, either by carrying it whole or by swallowing it and then regurgitating it for the others to eat. As the pups grow, the mother and other members of the pack help to feed them. Uh, their diet. Their diet consists of um, enormously, let's see, uh, Eurasian wolves commonly prey on medium-sized ungulates like, um, let's see, uh, mufflin, 
Kaimos, Saiga, Wild Boar, Red Deer, Roe Deer, and Livestock. What are those first ones? Mufflin, Kaimos? This must be like a species, I don't know, name or something. Uh, Eurasian wolves will occasionally eat smaller prey such as frogs and hares. Uh, in Europe, their largest prey is the Wisent, while in Asia, it's the Yak. Oh, well, good thing there's a giant mountain in front of the uh, Wisent and wolf habitat then. So, um, But the conservation status of the Eurasian wolf, uh, in Norway in 2001... The Norwegian government authorized a controversial wolf cull on the grounds that the animals were overpopulating and were responsible for the killings of more than 600 sheep in 2000. Wow, so that was, uh, what, 21 years ago? So... Sounds like at least 21 years ago there was a big population of them. Uh, the Norwegian authorities, whose original plan was to kill 20 wolves, were, were scaled down amid public outcry. In 2005, the Norwegian government proposed another cull with the intent of exterminating 25% of Norway's wolf population. A recent study of the wider Scandinavian wolf population concluded that there were 120 individuals at the most, causing great concern on the genetic health of the population. Oh, so no, opposite. They um, underutilized, or they didn't know how uh, little there were. Uh, wolves cross over the border from Russia into Finland on a regular basis. Although they are protected under EU law, Finland has issued hunting permits on a preventative basis in the past, which resulted in uh, European commissions taking legal action in 2005. In June to, uh, 2007, the European Court of Justice ruled that Finland had breached the Habitat's directive, but that both sides had failed in at least one of their claims. Finland's wolf po uh, population is estimated at around 250. Uh, Eurasian wolves are currently considered as least concerned by the IUCN. So there you go, just a few little you know tidbits about the uh, Eurasian wolf. Um, so it sounds like yeah, they're of least concern, but it sounds like their pop or their numbers like aren't like too too high. So huh, interesting. Um, but yeah, no, there's some uh, really interesting kind of facts there. So um, but yeah, as we're kind of jumping back over to the build again this is kind of the other big part of the build where we um built this uh, kind of rustic uh, or kind of old abandoned um bridge kind of wanting to get the same kind of style as the castle i kind of want this castle to um kind of lay the groundwork for uh yeah this habitat and maybe even the uh, eurasian brown bear habitat that we do next i was thinking of um not necessarily having like a full-on town or anything like that but maybe having like little outlier buildings um that would have been you know just at the base of the uh castle and uh yeah again the eurasian wolf habitat that we're building today having this um bridge and we're going to be putting a bunch of little um basically just yeah broken down pieces like little uh temple pieces. oh yeah that's what we use the south america temple pieces i don't uh, remember that we have them for a long time in the build um but yeah that really really completes the build is start to put down the uh temple pieces to make it look really decrepit and uh, kind of falling apart there so um but yeah no again that is um pretty much the majority of the build the rest of it's going to be doing a lot of foliage work so tell you what we are going to go ahead and jump into a live portion um, of the build here to kind of show everything off um yeah in in a live there so uh, yeah um, I'll see you in just a second for that. All right. Well, yeah. Welcome on in to the live looking of the Eurasian wolf habitat. So, yeah, like I said, it's a big uh, or it's a whole lot of uh, just really foliage work here um, to really make this uh, whole area come together. Um, so, yeah, the love how the castle came out in this whole little bridge area. But again, the uh, the big star is going to be the foliage. So um, just a few little ideas or just a few of uh, kind of what I was thinking when I was doing this habitat. Uh, the idea behind it is that it kind of starts in a lush big um, forest over here like it kind of have been uh, but then I kind of wanted it to thin out as it kind of moved forward so we have this creek that kind of starts on the back side of the hill um, over here we have the little starting spot right there randomly but you know it works um, but yeah we have the kind of creek going through here but yeah I wanted to thin out the forest uh, as we kind of move forward then it kind of moved into this little um, prairie section almost um, so yeah, that's kind of the, again, the general idea of the um, habitat there with the uh, the big castle, obviously, as the backdrop. So lush forest down into a little um, prairie section. So let's get a closer look here. We'll get a big old detailed look at everything going on. Uh, but the big thing is uh, the prairie here, the uh, grass that I made here. So um, this is, uh, yeah, one of the 
uh, kind of you stack a bunch of foliage on top of each other and you eventually get some really cool looking grasses. If you haven't seen uh, that done before, I do have a bunch of video, or not a bunch, maybe uh, a few videos where I've done this in the past, so you can see those there. But yeah, no, essentially uh, this is a um, an assortment of different uh, trees and grasses kind of um, put together to make um, a new one. So yeah, we have the, um, the poly whatever tree this is. <laughs> uh, but the big one that I want to take a look at here, if I can get to it is going to be the, the cowberry uh there it is here's the american beach grass so this is not a grass that is in game at the moment i guess this is a little bit of a sneaky peeky um of a new uh, mod pack that's coming from nicholas line Rider and i believe some others but uh yeah um, i'm able to beta test um fortunately this new um yeah, new North America pack that uh, they are making, and part of that is this American beach grass here, and I thought it looked awesome. It fit in perfectly um, with what I was kind of going for with this prairie. So uh, yeah, there's a little sneak peek at um, that what's coming in a few uh, weeks, a few months, there or whatever it is. So, um, but yeah, then the other big part of it here, I did forget to mention this was the uh, getting this rocks. Um, structure kind of set up here for them to uh, actually come up and use it. It was uh, pretty difficult to get them to actually walk up and down this little area here, but we did get it figured out and hit a few um, scent markers and, you know, a little cardboard box and everything. So get some really cool photos of the wolves coming up here howling with the uh, castle in the background and everything. So, uh, but you yeah, know, I really, really like how this came out. This is one of those builds that, um, and I always tell people to do this, but um, you just kind of had to keep at it, keep adding more foliage, more rocks, um, more, you know, ruined pieces for the um for the castle structures and everything for it to really kind of come together there because uh yeah just kind of for the longest time I, I was pretty much ready to give up on this build um in the middle of it i think that's why it kind of took me a little bit longer to get this episode out because i just was not seeing it i was not feeling it until it kind of um just kind of came together all at once there so um but you yeah, know so uh there we go there is the um the eurasian wolf habitat um hopefully y'all do enjoy do let me know what you uh, think of it down below and uh yeah like I said, in the next episode, we're going to be moving over to this plot of land over here for the Eurasian uh, brown bear. We'll have to kind of um, adjust the uh, barrier there for the Wisent and... Um uh, follow deer. I couldn't remember the name of them. Uh, follow deer a little bit so they're not uh, so close there. But yeah, no, we got to uh, kind of tie the uh, two of them in a little bit. So if you have any ideas of what would be kind of a uh, cool little area, kind of tied into the castle ruins and everything, do let me know down below in the comments there. And uh, yeah, no, so there you go. Do uh, again, let me know what you think of the entire build um, altogether. And yeah, we will hopefully have a, another episode there of the Planet Zoo Europe Pack Mini Zoo very, very shortly and everything. So yeah, hey, thanks so much everyone for hanging out. Oh, ways do appreciate it and before we go let's go ahead and find a uh, wolf here to kind of follow around i think it's nap time though at least for this one it is nap time we'll, we'll move them and then they'll kind of run around but we'll follow them as we uh as we head on out there so <laughs> nice but hey thanks so much everyone for ha uh, hanging out always do appreciate it if you made it this far in the video don't forget to hit that like button always those help out the channel help out the video and everything and also hit the uh share button and comment button so yeah awesome appreciate it everyone and until the next episode y'all have a good one